Hey guys, Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're going to check the stability of a power supply. So often you get a power supply, you want to make sure it's going to put out enough power. It's going to hold the voltage, not have too much ripple, all those good things. But a very important parameter of a power supply is stability. And so what is stability? Is stability of your power supply to maintain that voltage during load transits, okay? So you're, if you got a steady load, doesn't change, great. But what if you have a load that is idle and then steps up, goes to maybe max load, and then drops back down? Well, during those transitions, you don't want your power supply overcorrecting. You know, you don't want it to undercorrect. You want it to be stable. And so, how do you check that? Well, there's some sophisticated measurement techniques, but there's also some very simple ones too. A tried and true test is a step load, okay? And, you know, back before we had a lot of sophisticated equipment, that's what we did. You know, now we have these active loads that can do all kinds of cool stuff. But before those came along, things worked forever were step loads. Now, your power supply is actually limited to bandwidth, okay, which isn't a problem. You know, it's just the way power supplies are designed. So... You know, you'd want to say, hey, well, even if I have a real fast transient, real slow transient across, you know, any kind of uh, bandwidth, I'd want my power supply to stay in control. The problem with that is, let's say you have a 100 kilohertz switching power supply. If your bandwidth is wide enough that your power supply is trying to correct for 100 kilohertz changes in your output, well, it's going to be trying to change it's going to be trying to control that ripple, the natural ripple frequency of your regulator. That's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Your power supply is stuck at that frequency and it can only, it can't control the ripple. That's the LC filter and the output. Your feedback loop can't, can't compensate for that. And if it tries to do that, it's going to go unstable. It's going to oscillate. So what you do is a common thing, common practice, is that you limit to say one fifth the frequency. So you got 100 kilohertz switching, limit to 20 kilohertz your bandwidth. Now, that means that you know you can handle a lot of different step loads. Now, if it, you got a step load that's happening a lot faster than 20 kilohertz, well, your power supply might just take a little longer to respond, okay? But at least it's not going to go unstable. So that's the trade off. All right, so how do you check stability? Now, you're thinking about stability. Well, what is that? Overreacting and overcorrecting? You know, if you're driving a car, and if you've ever driven a car through snow or ice, and you've, especially the old days before we had anti-lock brakes and all this stuff, um, you know, if you're starting to slide, your car's starting to go one direction, you want to slowly correct for that. You don't want to go too slow because you won't react fast enough and you'll go out of control. But if you react too quickly, you overreact, overcorrect, then you know, then you're gonna fish tail even bigger the other direction. Then you're gonna go bigger and bigger and bigger until you're out of control that way too. So too slow you're gonna go out of control, too fast you're gonna go out of control. So you have to have this this nice little happy medium, okay? And doing step load testing, you can look for that, all right? If you do a step load, you're going from like say minimum current to some maximum current or max to min, and your voltage um, it's going to dip. But when it comes back, if it bounces up, comes down, and rings, then that's over correcting. That's you know that's not good. Okay. Now if it comes up too slow and takes forever to come up, that's not really good either. So you want something in between. Okay. So step loads, it's a way to check. You don't have to have an active load. I'll show you how to do it with just a resistor, okay? So, hey, let's jump into this test and let me show you how this thing works, okay? All right, let's do it. All right, so here's the setup. It's fairly simple. We're gonna use the Handtech current probe just to look at the current for fun. And we're gonna use the voltage probe right here. This is the output of this power supply and this is the input. Okay, so this is coming from our power supply on the bench, and this is going to the active load for now. Okay, and then we'll use one of these resistor loads later for the test. All right, but for now we're going to just use 
this up. So this is a boost converter, all right? We'll talk about the boost converter, but a boost, boost voltage, right? So, and remember, before a bo uh, boost converter starts to boost, as the voltage comes up, it just passes the voltage until it starts to boost, and then it starts to boost at the point it's supposed to. And so, you'll see that as we power up. All right, all right guys, so this is a setup, and it's a bit noisy because of this big old beast, this electronic load here. I replaced the Kunk and Load with the, uh, well just for this test at least, with the, with this big guy, okay? Okay, so this is the Kikasui, uh, big old load here. Um, kind of an old school guy, really easy to operate. I haven't learned how to do the Kikasui dynamic load and I want to do this video, so just brought this noisy beast in here for a minute. Now, what we're going to do is I have this thing set for 12 volts and 5 amps. He's in parallel mode, so it says parallel, and when I turn him on, he'll put current to the output, and you'll see this. Now, this guy here, I actually have the load on right now, so when I turn that on, he'll apply the load. And what we're going to do is go from 1 half amp to 1.5 amps. I think that's what we're going to do. So, um, with this guy here, it, it has two current settings. I set this one for half an amp. If I push that in, I have to put the voltage. Here, let me just turn on the voltage. You can see the waveform over here, square wave, but kind of jumping ahead of the game here. This guy, I'm going to set from half an amp to one and a half amps, and it's going to clock it at. I think it's about one kilohertz, somewhere around there. And um, so it's going to just go on and off, on and off. And we're going to see the response over here, okay? And uh, so that's what we're going to do. I'll bring the. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, okay, I'll turn that off and I'll come over here and we'll set up the scope. Okay, so let's set up the scope. We got. Um, scope probe on channel one and we got the current probe on channel three and we're not using this probe this is a different probe so this guy here he's on AC coupling because we're going to look at the ripple okay um, actually let's we'll start off in DC okay and we'll go one meg 10k and we're going to set this guy up down here at about five volts per division and then channel three um, now let's see channel one is set at 10x okay channel three it's also 10x and it's set at current because we're going to look at current so it'll read off current okay we got measurements set for peak to peak I went to the measurements and I added measurements this way to channel one and channel three so just went up here and selected RMS and peak to peak so we got those measurements down here and uh, we got the trigger level right here so we're gonna go from here let me get this position right down here okay I get that position right there and then I have to decouse the probe so now it's right here at the zero border and then I'll put channel 2 right on top of it. Okay, so they're both right here, and the current set right there. So we're going to go from a half amp to uh, one and a half amp. So it'll go from here to up here. So we'll trigger right around in there somewhere. Now the voltage is. Oh, I actually have the voltage turned on. <laughs> the power supply, I forgot to turn it off. So yeah, we're measuring voltage right now. It's 19.2 volts, 400 millivolts. So that's the actual voltage right there. Okay, here, let me zoom in on the screen. Okay, so you can see the measurements down here. Uh, channel one are the yellow, channel three are the uh, purple. And we're at five volts per division, half of uh, amp per division there. The triggers on channel three and it's set for 1.1 amps right there and uh, we're at five milliseconds per division so okay that looks good okay so I'm going to turn on the active load and we're going to see um, the current come up here 
and uh, okay you can probably hear the fans turning on okay the active loads up you can probably hear the fan blowing I'm going to turn on the load right now and you can see it kind of jump up here now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the um, the dynamic load so it's going to switch between this level and this level okay let me reach across here and turn that on there we go okay now we're not seeing really anything on this guy it's five volts per division um, let's look at the AC ripple of this guy because you can't really see it it says about 1.4 volts peak to peak 19.2 but it looks pretty well behaved so let's zoom in on this guy let's go to okay so what I'm going to do is go to uh, I'm going to go to AC couple okay and then we're going to bring that up actually in the center of the screen I'm just going to push the button centers it okay now we're going to go um, whoops sorry push the button in here let's change it to 2 volts 1 volt there we go now we can start seeing it Okay, that, that looks more like what we want to see. Um, here, I'll spread that out again so we only see. Okay, so now let me zoom back in the screen. Okay, guys, so I've zoomed in and we can see the current. Um, here, let me, I'll, I'll pull this up just a little bit so we can see the current down there. Okay, so we can see the current going from half an amp to 1.5 amps now so what's happening is the current steps up the voltage sags down and then it tries to correct and it comes up and you see how it kind of comes up and wiggles just a little bit and then comes in that's actually not too bad it just kind of comes up about one correction and then comes in so that's not too bad if it came up slower that'd be maybe too slow if it came up and bounced a couple times that'd be maybe too fast so it's kind of in between being slow and fast so it's it's running that kind of happy medium I think now as the load drops down then it bounces up and then it slowly comes in so that looks pretty good that doesn't look too bad at all now I can change okay so now this just gives you an idea of how to do this okay so this is going from right around 10 watts to probably um, about 30 watts so it's not a big step this is a 150 watt power supply uh, but you, you get the idea of what we're talking about here and so let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a way to do it without an active load here before we do that let's let's exercise this guy a little bit more I'm going to bring the current right down here in the middle again I'll bring the current down to the bottom of the screen okay so it's at the bottom scale so that's uh, three divisions up that's one half amps okay now I'm gonna bring this guy down as well so we can here I'll just push the button drop it in the middle and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the load okay so let's increase this load okay now see how the currents increasing I'm gonna increase it now, as I do that, you see how this is changing? It's getting amplified a little bit. So right about there, we're about, okay, so that's about, that looks like about two amps right there. Okay, so let's take it up a little bit higher. Okay, I'll drop, I'll drop this down. Okay, I'm gonna bring the current up a little bit higher, as high as I can go with this power supply, I think. Okay, now you see, as I do, it, see how long it takes for this to recover? And, but you notice that wiggle doesn't really get any worse? You notice that? That's a really good sign. See how I'm wiggling it around, getting the load up and down? But that wiggle doesn't really change. That's a really good sign. If that was getting more amplified right there, that would not be a good thing. But see how long it's taking this to come up? That's kind of a slow reaction. Same as this so this power supply looks pretty well behaved to me now this is noisy and that's from some other things we'll talk about in another video but you know part part of it's my instrumentation how 
the scope probes connected to the load and so not all of it's uh, noise from the power supply. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good, right? Okay, so here, let me uh, show you the manual way to do this. Okay, guys, so look what I've done here. I've got this 8 ohm, 200 watt resistor just kind of sitting on up here, okay? And I've tied this return leg on one side of that speaker, or I mean, on one side of that resistor, okay? I'm gonna drop that, let it just kind of hang down there, and see this guy? I'm gonna go ahead and just touch this and create a step load from zero load to load, right? Okay, here we go. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, this is 200 millivolts per division. I'm gonna go to one volt per division, see if we can capture it. I'm gonna go to single trigger. Okay, now let's see if I can capture something. Okay, see how it came right off? Here, let me even go two volts per division. Well, you can kind of see it there. Okay, we're gonna need a little more time, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see it a little better. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, sorry about reaching in front of the camera here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this trigger position from center over. So we're gonna just take this position right here, move it over because we wanna capture from the point of the trigger and what happens after. Okay, let me hit the single mode trigger button again. Okay, it's waiting for me to do something. There we go. See, I went from, if I bring the current up, you can see right there, there's a zero. It went up to one, two, three, four. It's half an amp per division, so it's that's one amp, two amps. You know, about a little more than two amps. Not quite two and a half amps. And then it sags because the voltage sags. So the voltage actually dropped quite a bit. It went two, four volts, you know, almost five volts down. Now the thing is, is this power supply is going from a no load to a pretty decent load so it but you notice how long it came back up so that's a sign of basically a slow reaction that means you're not going to have an oscillation the power supply is not going to go out of control Here, let's try to capture another one. Oh, I gotta go to single trigger there we go look I kinda bounced so there you go um, but it's well behaved, you know, it may dip a little bit more. But All right, so if we, were, if we had a little bit of current on it and then we stepped down, it, it would have reacted better. You know, when we were using the active load over here, it behaved a lot better. So, you know, you can see what happens from a no load to, a, you know, a fairly decent load. It doesn't quite behave as well, but at least it's not oscillating, right? So this power supply is a little bit slow on the no load to light load, or you know, on the lower load scale, but it's a 150 watt power supply. So it's meant, you know, it's meant to have a little bit more load. Okay, so I hope that kind of helped you see how to use a step load to see if your power supply is stable. If it's not stable, it can overreact and end up oscillating and blowing up. And that's not a good thing. All right, so hey, I'm gonna turn off this other power supply and make it a little more quiet. All right, well, hey, hey guys, I hope that gave you an idea about how to use step loads to check your stability of your uh, power supply. Now, if your power supply is not stable and if it does start to oscillate, it starts to ring, ringing's one thing, but oscillation means that it starts to grow and grow and grow. Uh, that can kill power supply. Um, it can just blow itself up, it goes out of control. So that's not a good thing. Uh, now this step load, I just use one resistor. Now if you had a, say a two resistor type test, you could have one resistor as a minimum load and then uh, pop the other resistor and try, you know, for the heavier load, okay? So you can go, if you have different resistor values, you can try different combinations. 
if your load is if you think your load is going to be inductive or capacitive you can add inductance and capacitance to your load and you can try you know different variations and try different load steps and and just make sure that your power supply never goes unstable and you don't have to try we call them corner cases you know maybe worst case scenarios and you know after doing a few of these tests you have a pretty good idea if you have a stable power supply so hope that was helpful thanks for watching uh give me a thumbs up if you like this okay all right we'll see you next time